The Grand Sefton is next and this is over the uh, Grand National Fences as well. It's two more five furlongs this time and 0 to 140. And you can see the card going through there. Called in, away they go. We'll do this in the style of Julian Wilson, and they're off. Well, I can't quite do that, so I won't. Anyway, Roseneath Nina has gone off into the lead. I think that one went off into the lead the other week and fell, but we'll see what happens today. Over these national fences, and all safely negotiate the first. I should really be doing this commentary in the style of Pathé News 1950 as we're covering it from the inside of the track. You can see them racing now towards the chair, the biggest fence on the course, and they've all safely negotiated that one. And now they're racing towards the water jump. The water jump, the smallest fence really, which is a very easy one to take, and they've all taken that one quite nicely, with Roseneath Nina in the lead by two lengths from the big grey horse Batchley Gale, who's in second. The rest of the field are very tightly grouped, and you can see the jockeys are all standing up high in the irons and looking forward to racing out now onto a full circuit of this course, and they cross the Melling Road, and now they're racing down towards the fence, which will be the first when they next partake in the Grand National. But it's Roseneath Nina who is in the lead by about five lengths. And it's clear. And you can see as they come to this one, they're all really getting ready to jump in. And they've all jumped it very well. Yes, they're all safely over that one without any great difficulty. And now they race to the second. And it's the same again. They're all over it. But no, 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 no. The Grey made a mistake. The Grey made a mistake. Batchley Gale did its best to jettison the pilot over the ears of the horse. But... He stayed in the plate, and now they get to the third, and they're all not quite over that because Batchley Gale did the same thing again, and this time the jockey said, no, I'm not staying on board, and he exited the side door as they take number seven. And a really slow jump from Merchant's Gale, or Merchant's Hill even, who doesn't even look like he wants to be racing, but Roseneath Nina is showing the way. She wants to get home for her oats, and she comes now to the next, and she gets over it nicely from time to leave in second place. And then in third is Pride of Paris and Double Diamond is making ground and then comes Overcome Scimitar and El Sophia Miller is after that one as they come down now towards the famous Beaches Brook and that Beaches Brook was a faller. Time to leave has indeed decided it is time to leave and has left and is now out of the race. Roseneath Nina coming down to the Foreign Haven fence, the scene of the debacle of 1967 and then all safely over that one and Roseneath Nina is still still in front from Whistling Sarah and Double Diamond who are making significant progress as they now come to the canal and the canal turn you can't see a canal but trust me you can see a turn and Roseneath Nina is still in the lead from Double Diamond in second and Whistling Sarah is next as they take Valentine's Brook send a message to your sweetheart and Roseneath Nina continues to lead by four lengths to Double Diamond in second and then Whistling Sarah is after that one and Viva Paradiso and Pride of Paradise and then Glowing Shrew and Overcome Scimitar is also making some ground with Elsafia Mella and now Merchant's Hill is trying to get a part of the race as well and all looking towards the back St. Jude is very much not interested in racing today and is tailed off as they take number 15 and that's three from home and now Roseneath Nina is overcome Roseneath Nina is overcome by Double Diamond we've all been overcome by Double Diamond at some time if you're as old as me and it's Roseneath Nina in the lead from Double Diamond Viva Paradiso and Glowing through are making ground and then comes El Sophia Mella after that one and Whistling Sarah is still there Roseneath Nina is really doing well to try and stick on but now he's drawn Dropping away and Viva Paradiso has hit the front. Viva Paradiso is now into the lead as they begin to make their way towards the straight in this Grand Sefton chase. And Viva Paradiso is in the lead from Glang Shrew and then Double Diamond and Elsevier Mera as they take the second last. And oh no, Glang Shrew has taken the lead. Viva Paradiso made a dreadful mistake. And now Glang Shrew is in the lead. Glang Shrew from Viva Paradiso and then Double Diamond and Elsevier Mera. They're racing down towards the final fence and Glang Shrew 
lands in the lead. Viva Paradiso is trying to challenge. Then Elsphere Miller and Double Diamond and first prize Never Dear Scimitar. But now Elsphere Miller. Elsphere Miller it is who bursts into the lead as they race towards the final furlough. And it's Elsphere Miller who looks like she might win it, but Double Diamond is fighting back. Elsphere Miller. Double Diamond. Elsphere Miller on the near side. Elsphere Miller. Double Diamond fighting back. Elsphere Miller, I think, is going to take it. Not the line. Elsphere Miller is the winner. Double Diamond is second. And never comes Scimitar. Is third. A splendid race, and Elsafia Miller, as you can see, took it well. Double Diamond second, and becomes Scimitar third. Full list of the connections Elsafia Miller, Thomas Rogers the winner. Double Diamond, Graham Clutterbuck second. Overcome Scimitar, Alex Cherry third. Glowing Shrew, James Shea fourth, and in to win, David Hooley fifth.